Fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Mixed bag US Open 2023 edition. If you subscribe to the Tennis Nerd newsletter, that's free. You already know this. And if you're a Patreon, you know this and you get loads, loads more. So please join. Seven day free trial. So you have nothing to lose there. Thanks to you guys who reach out over Instagram or via the contact us form or other social media. If you see something like different spots, different players trying new things. Ben Shelton used Politor Pro the last time we visited him. I think there was like a few weeks ago or a month ago or so. And now he's with a black main string. And my best guess is that it's uh, Yonex Politor Strike, a little bit of a firmer string, a bit more control. He is a big hitter, string breaker, and Yonex Politor Pro is a little bit softer. So maybe he wants to kind of stiffen up that string bed or get a little bit more control from it. And then it could be good to have Politor Strike in the mains. We all know that Steph Sitsipas has been experimenting as well. He loves the 4G setup, but he's been trying it with the hybrids of natural gut, mains and crosses, trying to mitigate some of that uh, stiffness that comes with 4G in a relatively stiff racket as a Blade 98 Pro Stock with 18 mains and 20 crosses. So he's been trying to find a softer setup that still gives him the confidence of a full bed of Luxlon 4G. And he's not the only guy who's experimenting a little bit away from a full bed of 4G. We already have Alex Deminor who has made the switch and you can read about his switch and a few other pro players on the ATP Tour website. I'll give them a shout out. They have some interesting information there. But Steph is now with Luxlon Alu Power full bed. I don't know the tension. I don't want to bother him on WhatsApp. As you know, I've been in contact with him before and I can take absolutely zero credit for him testing this string setup. But if it works for him, that's great. Maybe Mark Philippoussis has uh, helped him find this or found like a setup that he likes and he can just focus on that. I think the biggest advice from this whole saga is that you need to find a setup where you're comfortable. You don't have to always try to tweak. Uh, although I think it's more and more common these days that the pros try to find that little bit of extra power, spin, comfort, control in their setup. So that's going to happen more and more in the future as well. We're going to see them trying to tweak their, um, their equipment because they're already so physically fit. They work on their mental health. The competition is just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So you need all the advantages you can get if you're a true professional. And just look at Novak. He is really going after every single percentage he can find and squeeze out to maximize his performance. He does that really well. That's why he's uh, number one. So uh, you're going to see that more and more and more that players are looking into how to improve their gear so as to improve their game. Next up, we have Francis Tiafo. I think this was the most interesting story because there's some different learnings here. And that's that he's playing with his old rackets. He doesn't play with the Percept. Percept is the new name for the control line of Yonex rackets. They are very similar to the previous generation. They have servo filter, which is supposed to filter up some vibrations, create a cleaner feel, I guess, stiffer in the hoop, which I think is a good idea. I think sometimes the Vico Pros were a little bit too flexible, but I hope to give you a full Percept review coming soon. So the V Core. Pro, why is it in Tiafo's hands? Well, obviously this is uh, his spec, his old racket. He's not changing rackets. We've gone through that already. It's obvious the pros are playing with what they already know. And then the racket manufacturers paint the rackets to look like the new retail model. That's pretty logical. They want to sell more rackets. The pros want to use what they know. And uh, that's how the saga continues. You can call it false marketing. You can call it what you want. It's just the case in many, many industries. Uh, tennis is not isolated here. This is just how it works. The question here is why is he using his old rackets when Yonex obviously want him to use the Percept rackets and want him to endorse that, play with that. So people that look at the Alpha say, oh, he uses this racket, I will buy it. Uh, good question, really. I think uh, there could be three different reasons the way I see it. One of the most common reasons was the reason for Juan Martín del Potro. He used the K-Factor cosmetic for a long time. That, so that was the Wilson 6195. He remained with the same paint for a long, long time. And at the end, I think he only had four rackets remaining. Why did he do that? Because when you're playing with a racket, when you're stringing a racket, you're breaking down the graphite. Slowly, slowly, the fibers are breaking down, making the racket softer. It doesn't have the same crispness, but it also plays a little bit softer on the arm and in the way it feels. So I think maybe he really enjoyed that. He wanted to keep playing with that kind of feel. And for Wilson, it was hard to execute. They, they sent him new frames. He didn't like them because they were stiffer, obviously. And so in the end, I think they decided to just string them up many, 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 many times without him playing them and then send them over to him to be played. And that way they were already broken in, but someone had to do the boring job of stringing and stringing and stringing and then cutting out the strings and they had to find a metric there. 
I'm not 100% sure that this was the case. This is what I've heard. I think it's a pretty plausible explanation. So maybe Francis has broken in his old V-Core Pros and that's why he wants to use. They are softer. He's used to them. Something is, is familiar there. Uh, he tried a new Percep Rackets before the US Open. He didn't do great. So maybe it's also kind of like a superstitious thing. That's a very plausible explanation as well. Could be a head game where you don't like how a certain racket looks. We have a case of Novak Djokovic, for example. He doesn't like to play with white rackets. And that's why I guess Head is always coming up with these limited edition black uh, rackets. Now Wilson does the same. So US Open, you always see new rackets and they're always black in some way. So you have the Wilson Noir series and you have the new Speed Black. But the reason is from the, from the start that Novak Djokovic, he doesn't like to play with a predominantly white rackets under the lights. I think that maybe bothers his vision when he's about to hit the shot, the white and the glare from the lights. And uh, maybe really kind of gives him a, a kind of a blinding sensation or uh, he just doesn't like how it looks. But I think that there's something with the white that he doesn't like. Federer had the same issue with the Wilson tuxedo paint job of his Pro Staff 97. So sometimes pro players will get a cosmetic and they won't like it. Generally, they feel like something is different. When you get that thought into your head, it's kind of hard to let it go. So I think uh, we're seeing that from time to time that the players really kind of refuse a cosmetic. We saw it with Andy Murray with the PT57A when he got it in that kind of bright orange design. Would love to talk to Andy and ask him if it was actually the design because it was not the best looking racket in, in Head's history, in my opinion, or if it was more that they play differently. But that could definitely be the, be the case that Tiafo is either more happy with his older frames, he doesn't like the cosmetic for some reason, maybe someone who, who strings for Tiafo or knows him can chime in on this. It's not a big news story, we're here like, grasping at straws, but it's quite interesting how, how these small things can affect the professional players in our sport because uh, obviously that's the highest stakes, highest level, every little gram, ounce, percentage where you can move the margins towards your favor makes a huge difference. So uh, that's why we're into this and that's why it's kind of fascinating in the end. If you want to contribute to Tennis Nerd and you have a creative spirit or you just love tennis and you want to share your thoughts about tennis, reach out. Uh, we need more contributors. Uh, if you want to support, join Patreon. As I said, there's a bunch of new content, bonus content coming out there. You can also buy my used rackets there if you want. So join patreon.com slash tennis nerd. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day and most importantly, don't forget to play some tennis because your day will be nicer for it.